This patient's had a traumatic sublux cataract with an atonic dilated pupil, and we'll first start by making three incisions. Notice these incisions where they're placed. Uh, there are three incisions we'll be using primarily uh, for the iris repair, and they're equidistant apart. Uh, three incisions, uh, left, right, and then nasally here for access. Some lidocaine is injected into the anterior chamber, and then some dispersive viscoelastic is used to uh, fill the anterior chamber, particularly in the area of the, of the dialysis. Now, the cataract procedure will be performed through a temporal clear coronal incision, which is made here. And as you can see here, in this case, a toric IOL is used. A cap retention ring has been placed in the capsular bag as well. And because we're going to be doing a pupoplasty here, we're going to remove viscoelastic from behind the IOL manually using a 27 gauge cannula. This is important to do this prior to the repair of the iris as it may be difficult to access uh, the viscoelastic behind the lens and this is done manually here and carefully to remove all the viscoelastic from behind the IOL to ensure the toric lens stays in position to prevent rotation as well as to reduce the likelihood of a potential postoperative IOP spike. Here we're injecting some BSS as well under the capsule to ensure that all the OVD has been removed from behind and around the IOL. And uh, we can see the capsule come up and shows now that the OVD has been removed. Keep in mind that the viscoelastic is still retained in the anterior chamber to prevent AC shallowing while it's been removed behind the IOL. Myocol is placed directly over the iris and swept centrally here to try to achieve some pupillary constriction, which is minimal. And then we use a pair of micro graspers to uh, grab the pupil edge to bring it forward, see how much tissue is there, uh, look at the distensibility of the tissue, and usually there's quite a lot of tissue that we can work with. And even with a long-term uh, chronically dilated pupil, we can actually get a significant uh, effect. Now here's a tenoproline on a curved CI4 needle placed through the nasal paracentesis, the micro grasper is used. And we're going straight down through iris tissue here, uh, directing the needle into the central uh, anterior chamber space. Notice the direction of the needle during our initial placement, and then we will direct the needle, in this case, uh, toward the nasal quadrant. For the pupillary cerclage, uh, we take multiple bites uh, through the iris tissue around the pupil. Uh, these bites should be as close as possible, and you can see the micrograsper here is being used to hold the iris tissue to pass the needle through. The suture technique is essentially a running baseball style uh, suturing technique. You can see the bites here again are just literally about a millimeter or less than a millimeter from the pupil edge itself. And it's important to note that both the suture needle itself are, is maneuvered into the anterior chamber. And importantly, the micro grasper here presents the um, iris tissue to the needle to facilitate its passage. Uh, it's very important, of course, to as we work in this closed space, uh, to use the uh, incisions as a fulcrum to prevent corneal stria and rotation of the needle, and the control here is afforded by these micro-instruments. Once we've gotten through here a significant amount of tissue, as we see, we're going to inject a little bit more viscoelastic uh, to preserve the anterior chamber space, as well as remove some of that pigment that's in our view. And we continue along here, marching toward that superior incision, which in this case is to the left side of our view. And we're going to try to grab as much tissue as we can, as we comfortably can here. And notice we've changed the uh, trajectory, the uh, angle of that needle heading it toward that uh, superior paracentesis and particularly toward the end of the needle pass here most of the work is being done by the micro grasper uh, pushing along the iris tissue along the needle itself uh, to give us uh, more room at the tip to pass the iris tissue here you can see why it's helped to grab the needle here very close to the swedge uh, to allow enough needle uh, length itself to be placed in the anterior chamber to grab as much iris tissue as possible. And usually this toward the end of this uh, first pass, this is the most challenging aspect here to prevent a rotation of the needle or an aerodialysis. At this point, we're gonna come out through that super incision, docking the needle to a 27 gauge cannula, and then uh, pushing and pulling uh, the needle out through that paracentesis. It's also important to ensure and watch for excessive traction on the iris tissue, as you can see uh, very diligently and carefully uh, pushing the needle forward. We then remove the needle again with the needle driver following the natural curve of the needle. We avoid pulling the needle with the docking needle. It's much more controllable by using the needle driver itself to pull the needle. And we're basically going to uh, pull the needle um, with some counter traction with a Kuglin hook following the natural curve of this gently curved CIF4 needle. And now we've made our pass to approximate one third of that uh, nasal and supranasal iris. 
We're now ready to make our second pass for our pupillary cerclage. And you can see where the iris is entered initially. We'll recognize that point as our next pass will be made just adjacent to it. This is double-armed uh, tenoproline with these two CIF4 curved needles. We're going to now go through the same paracentesis we initially came from. And now using our left hand to hold the needle driver, um, we will then grasp a needle again close to the swedge and place the first pass very close uh, and adjacent to the initial pass that was made with the first uh, nasal pass. Again, going through the main, in this case going through the main incision with our micro-grasper, uh, directing the needle toward uh, the main incision. We will then uh, continue the uh, baseball running suture technique here uh, with the assistance of the micro-grasper to present the iris and actually push the iris through the needle. So you can see in this case again, needle is fairly stationary and the iris itself is being manipulated to bring it to the needle tip as well. This is a bit more controlled. It's, it's often difficult to control that needle in the anterior chamber, moving it back and forth uh, without coming out of the previously passed uh, tissue. We'll switch hands here now using our right hand to grab the needle and injecting some more viscoelastic as we uh, approach the temporal incision. You can see now we've used our superior incision with the micro-grasper to uh, have a better approach grabbing that iris and bringing it to the needle tip. So using multiple incisions, really working out what the best uh, angle to use our micro administration is helpful here to be able to uh, access the entire iris and pupil edge for 360 degrees, as well using both the right hand or left hand, depending on, again, on which area of the anterior chamber we're working in. It's helpful to grab that needle. Uh, here again, at the very end of this passage here, this is usually the most challenging part. Important here again to keep that needle as steady as possible, holding with the right hand here and trying to grab as much tissue as we can until we get under that temporal incision. Again, using a 27 gauge docking needle to dock the needle to ensure we don't grab any corneal tissue. It's very important to pass that needle freely through that incision, and that's why a docking needle helps. Once we get the needle tip through, the, through that incision, though, it's important to release the docking needle and then pull the remaining uh, needle through the incision using a needle driver to allow it to gently follow the curve of that needle, preventing any uh, torquing or any tension on the iris tissue uh, that could inadvertently cause more trauma. Uh, again, counter-traction can be used with a Kuglin hook uh, to pull the uh, suture through. And then we'll evaluate again where that uh, last pass was made. Uh, we have to remember that in terms of where we're going to initially uh, be going through. It helps, again, get more of a loop into the eye so we can see where we're coming from. Now, in this case, uh, we've determined that it would be an easier approach uh, to pass the needle through an inferior paracentesis. So we're actually going to take that needle that has come out through the temporal incision, dock it through the inferior uh, paracentesis, and pull it out so we can then re-enter the eye through the inferior paracentesis. You can see this will give us a much better approach as we head toward that superior paracentesis. Again, highlighting the importance of using the right incision and the incision placement uh, as we do the pupillar cerclage. This is now with our right hand holding the needle itself and again using the same baseball running suture technique here, micro grasp for holding the iris to pass along. Notice again that we've taken multiple bites, uh, probably anywhere from 10 uh, or more bites along each side of the uh, pupillary cerclage. In this case, we've divided up in three. Uh, we've placed our micro grasp through that uh, superior paracentesis to provide the best access. And we're almost toward the end of this cerclage here, uh, very patiently and diligently uh, trying to suture the um, pupil margin here in a purse string manner. And you can see we've note, take, taken note where that last pass was made along the uh, superior side, injecting further viscoelastic sees there's still, rema still remaining tissue left. It's important not to try to finish off too early here. If we do, then there can be a little notch that forms there which isn't the end of the world. We can always place an additional simple suture in that area, but it's nice to be able to get it done here with one suture. Uh, now we're ready to dock the needle here, uh, docking with a 27 gauge cannula. We usually place the cannula in viscoelastic so we can inject into the eye if need be. And then we'll gently push and pull, again, primarily pushing here with the needle driver, releasing from the docking needle and then pulling the needle completely out. So now we have uh, both ends of the suture out through that superior paracentesis, and we're now ready to plan on tying the suture. We'll then use a Kuglin hook to identify uh, both suture ends in the anterior chamber. We're going to now cut the uh, needle off uh, both ends of the sutures. And uh, this technique here we're going to use, we're going to actually bring both of the suture ends out through the main incision. And this will allow us to tie the suture 
um, in a modified mechanical technique. And we find this to be the uh, usually the easiest and the most titratable and controlled way to tie the suture. There are many ways to tie the suture. Um, it's very important to control the tension here as we tie the suture, and therefore we like using uh, combined external and internal uh, technique, as we'll show here. Other techniques, including the sliding knot, can be used as well. Uh, we have a short end and a long end, and uh, we'll identify here both ends here uh, along the temporal side of the eye. The long end is grasped with a traditional straight tire, while we have the micro tire here being used to loop around itself with the long end of the suture, grabbing the short end and then cinching the knot to form a tighter uh, knot as we bring it into the anterior chamber. And then we're going to slide the knot with the pair of the micro, micro graspers into the anterior chamber. And this is where the micro graspers can be very helpful, either through the main incision or through a side port to pull the short end into the eye bringing that knot toward the uh, pupil margin and then tightening it. Here we're going to tighten that uh, suture here to about a 3.5 millimeter pupil size, which is usually our planned uh, aperture. This usually gives us the best uh, balance between um, reducing photophobia and allowing adequate visibility of the posterior segment and in the mesopic uh, light setting for cosmesis. Identify the long end and the short end here. We pull the short end out of the eye. And it's important to keep that short end relatively short this allows easy maneuverability into the anterior chamber, so we just trimmed a little bit there, almost the length of a corneal diameter. Again, doing a single throw in the reverse direction to lock the knot here, using that uh, micro tire here uh, to bring that knot into the anterior chamber, uh, pull it tight to lock that knot uh, onto the pupil edge where the initial triple throw was made. And uh, this again done with the exquisite control using micro instrumentation to bring the knot into the eye. This is what we've termed uh, the modified uh, mechanical technique, or some have described it as the McAhmed technique, which combines the benefits of the mechanical uh, external suture throwing with the internal aspects of the micro tire within the anterior chamber uh, for adequate control. The, the final throw is made to, to confirm the knot, and then a micro scissor is used to trim those suture ends here to adequate size. Uh, note at the inclusion of the case, the pupil has come down quite nicely. Um, of course, it won't dilate more than it is right now, but this will significantly reduce the amount of photophobia and glare this patient's had with uh, an adequate cosmesis result in this traumatic subluxation of the lens and atonic pupil. Pupillary cerclage here is probably one of the more complex procedures we do in the eye and can be done under topical with intracamular lidocaine or retrobulbar block if necessary.